All right, good evening and welcome to Master Talker Online class. We are still on the question on solving our question on physics 111. All right, so the first question we are going to solve we are in question number 41. And um, please, if today is your first day of watching our video, please don't forget to click the subscribe button. Question number 41 said an object, an object is acted upon upon by two forces of 15 newton and the 20 newton then i say calculate the resultant resultant the resultant of the two forces okay if if the forces act at angle 60 degrees to each other okay solution i told you that there is a formula you can use to calculate the resultant of two vectors whenever they act at a particular angle okay and the formula simply say that what your r squared is equal to what f1 squared plus f2 squared minus 2 f1 f2 cos what 180 minus theta you can watch my video on vectors okay if you don't understand how this formula came about with that video you understand it perfectly so now i have this so let me substitute my f1 is 15 f2 is 20 and my angle is 60 so i'm going to have r squared is going to be what 15 squared plus what 20 squared minus 2 times 15 times that 20 then what cos 180 minus 60 so I'm going to have um, I'm going to have two two five plus four hundred plus okay uh, let me say minus um, six hundred six hundred cos one twenty cos one twenty so I'm going to have two two five plus four hundred minus three plus three hundred because here is minus half times this you're going to have plus this so I'm going to have that my arrow squared is equal to nine two five my r will now be the square root of what 925 so do that and get your final answer please cross check all this my calculation because i don't have calculator with me here so punch it by yourself to confirm if the figures are really correct all right so we'll go to the next question question number 42 question number 42 said um they said the slope the slope of velocity time graph the slope of velocity time graph is then then i say illustrate with a sketch or a diagram so i have my velocity i have my time velocity is measured in meter per second and i have my time that is measured in second now if i have something like this and then take my slope if i take my slope here will be change in velocity here will be change in time so sorry change in time okay so i'm going to have that my slope my slope is equal to what change in velocity change in velocity over what change in time and the only thing that has change in velocity over change in time is acceleration acceleration is equally change in velocity over change in time so which is same as what slope so the what the slope of velocity time graph is called acceleration okay the slope of velocity time graph is acceleration so that is that we move to question number 43 these things are very very simple question number 43 which said an object an object is rotating about an axis of radius 0 0.4 meters at a constant at a constant angular acceleration constant angular acceleration of 0 0.5 rad per second square they don't say it's it's radical acceleration after after four seconds will will be dash okay 
first of all, let us get our parameters. The first thing they gave us. Okay, the first thing they gave us a solution. They gave us um, they say an object is rotating about an axis of radius. They gave us the radius as 0 0.4 meters at a constant angular acceleration. They gave us alpha 0 0.5 rad per sec per second square. They now say it's radical acceleration. They gave us time. The time they gave us is four seconds. Okay, they now say it's radical acceleration. It's radical acceleration after four seconds. I think I cannot remember the formula for this. So you can just browse it and then know the formula. But if not, in the next video, I will try and solve it. So just know that we did not solve question number 43. So let me move to question number 44. All right. So just know that we did not solve question number 43. You can just browse it. The formula may be very, very simple, but I cannot just remember it now. So let's go to question number uh, 44. Question number 44 said, um, what is rest energy? Okay. Then when I said here that rest energy is energy a body possesses by the virtue of its mass. Okay. Along, alone. So, alone. So, the energy a body possesses by the virtue of its mass alone is called rest energy. So, let's go to question number 45. Question number 45 said, um, a ball a ball if i remember this i will still solve it but if not in our next video we'll do that a ball is moving is moving if you know the formula you can still comment comment the formula at the comment section to help us okay the a ball a ball is moving with with a velocity a velocity of uh, 0 0.5 meter per second they say its velocity its velocity is decreasing at a rate of 0 0.005 meter per second square. Then I say, what is its velocity after 4 seconds? Okay, solution. Now, let's bring out our parameters. Uh, the first thing they gave us is um, they say a ball is moving with a, a velocity. So they gave us initial velocity u as 0 0.5 meter per second. Okay. Now say if velocity started decreasing, okay, at the rate they gave us deceleration because it is decreased. So minus 0 0.005 meter per second square. So now say what is the velocity t is equal to what unknown. Okay, sorry, my t is four seconds. Okay, my final velocity is now unknown. But I know that V is equal to what? U plus AT. So if you now do it, you are going to have that V is equal to my U is 0 0.5 plus my acceleration is minus 0 0.005. Okay, and then my time there is 4. My time there is 4. So I'm going to have 0 0.5 um, minus, let's multiply that. If you multiply that, you are going to have... Um, We're going to have 0 0.005 times 4. Okay, I'm going to have 0 0.02. So I'm going to have minus 0 0.5. I'm going to have 0 0.48 in meter per second. So if you look at that, you'll see that the velocity was initially 0 0.5, but it's now reduced to what? 0 0.48. Because if you do not put this minus, if you don't know that as it is reducing, it is decelerating. So we're going to use minus here and not plus. Okay? So that is that for you to know that deceleration is negative acceleration. All right? So if you still know the formula to calculate that, please don't forget to drop at the comment section. So this is 46. Question number 46. If we get to 50, we stop. Question number 46 said, why is the earth, why is the earth gravitational potential always negative? Okay? You can browse that and tell us the answer at the comment section. Question number 40. Why is it negative? Okay, I said that the Earth's gravitational potential is negative because the gravitational field performs work, performs work in bringing a mass from infinity. Okay? You can still browse that to get your own clear answer. So we go to question number 47. So question number 47 said two forces.
two forces whose resultant is 100 newton are perpendicular perpendicular to each other okay then i say if one of them makes makes an angle 60 degrees with that resultant then then i say calculate its magnitude okay this is a very simple question you just draw it and then you know what to do i have two forces that are acting perpendicular to each other now i now have a resultant that must pass through them okay and then then i say that this resultant makes an angle 60 with one of them so if i trace this now i'm having that um, this is 100 right and they say i should calculate let me say that this is the force that is making an angle of 60 with this so you now have that this is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse so so katoa so i have adjacent over so i have cos so cos 60 is equal to adjacent f over hypotenuse 100 so my f will now be what 100 cos 60 which is what 100 times 0 0.5 which is what 50 newton very very simple to calculate question number 48 question number 48 so question number 48 said the si unit of momentum is what momentum is what force don't forget that momentum is force times time yes momentum is sent as impulse impulse is sent as what momentum an impulse is force times time and force is what newton seconds so momentum is measured in what newton second so the next one said the equivalent the equivalent the equivalent of velocity velocity of 180 kilometer per hour in in si unit is then then i say you should show your work very very simple so they gave us 180 kilometer per hour which is what 180 times 1000 divided by 60 times 60 so do the math and get your own answer by yourself so i think when i did it i got 50 meter per second so you can try it and check if it is 50 meter per second all right so the question number 50 which is the last question i'm going to solve for this particular video question number 50 said convert the density convert the density of 0 0.0.10 0 .10 gram cm cube to si units okay solution now uh, I have 0 0.10, in fact, 0 0.10 gram per cm cube. Now, 0 0.1, converting gram to kilogram means dividing by 1,000, okay? Divided by, because of this pair. Now, converting uh, cm to meter is uh, dividing by 100, okay? Yes, dividing by 100. Converting cm to meter, dividing by 100, so I'm going 1 over 100 raised to power 3. So I'm going to have, um, so if you convert, if you change divide to times, you are going to have um, 0 0.1 over 1,000, then times um, 100 raised to power 3. So I'm going to have, um, so you can try to do your own conversion yourself to see what happened. Yes, so I'm going to have, um, what do I have? 0 0.1 0 0.1 times 100 times another 100 times another 100 then divided by 1000 so i'm going to 100 100 kilogram per meter cube okay so that is that so thank you very much for watching this particular video please like share and subscribe if you still remember the formula for that question please drop it on the comment section bye bye 40 minutes wow